Hi there, friends. It is I, Aaron, in the voiceover from the future. As you can see, we are drawing Calypso today, and if you don't know, Calypso is the love of my life. She is like, I call her my muse. When I started making Bush Queens, I came up with Calypso and had just, it, it just changed me somehow. Anyway, I, I paint her a lot, and she is one of my favorite things to draw and paint in the entire world. And today, I am putting her on canvas and making her look like the golden goddess that she absolutely is. So I'm using the same transfer method that I used in um, my last video, which is basically just scribbling graphite all over the back of this little sketch and then going over it um, to transfer the lines onto the canvas. And it's a pretty fail-safe method I have found, and it's also obviously very cheap. No need to buy carbon paper or to use a projector or anything. You can just transfer images, and that's just what I've been doing, and it's been working great. So uh, I'm gonna just paint her on an unprimed canvas and you can see pretty clearly um, the effect of that in terms of how patchy the paint comes out, but that really worked to my advantage. Um, and I think that's something that I'm gonna keep doing intentionally every time I paint people, well, I always paint people. So um, I don't know, the, um, the thing about skin, human skin, is that it has all kinds of different hues hues and different uh, variations of whatever skin tone it is. Like nobody's skin is just one flat tone. So I think it actually really um, works in my advantage to have that sort of imperfect uh, ness, <laughs> that imperfectness, that imperfection just in the canvas itself. It's not a perfectly smooth surface and it uh, doesn't go on perfectly smooth, which actually adds a lot of really good uh, detail in my opinion. At first I was painting it on it and it goes on really streaky and patchy and I'm kind of thinking, oh, I'm gonna have to go over this so many times because I was stupid and I didn't prime my canvas. But the more I looked at her, the more I was like, this is actually kind of working. And I tend to go over in a couple of different, um, different shades just around like the edges and throughout the middle to add shadows and highlights um, just in general and I, I do that anyway but it just works out okay so if you're wondering like this this looks awkward at first and um, it's a trust the process type of a thing because I also do go back in and blend um, a little bit too and it just works out I don't know so anyhow um, I'm gonna come back and do more voiceover stuff, but I'll, I'll just let you watch for a little bit. <laughs>
One thing that I guess I should mention about Calypso is that she is not meant to be the actual goddess Calypso. She's just named after her because she is in fact a living goddess of a woman. I also created Venus and Artemis at the same time. At a, well, I kind of added them to Calypso's tribe after I created her. Um, and I just, uh, I'll, I'll probably actually do a couple more of these with Venus and Artemis and then hang them up together as a trio. Um, just because I, I loved the sort of style that I came up with when I made them. They all look completely different. They're all different skin tones, different hairstyles. Um, they're completely different women, but they all give off the exact same energy, which is just so fabulous. Um, there is definitely like, uh, a very strong and powerful feeling that I get from painting and even just looking at Calypso and that's why I love her so much because obviously she's a bush queen and she's silly and she's cute and she's something that I created for fun but she's also just gorgeous to me and she embodies so much strength and so much wisdom somehow I don't know um, it's it's a weird thing where you kind of create characters in your mind out of these little people that you're just painting and creating out of your imagination and it is like they're real somehow. I don't know if that happens to everyone else who paints characters, but um, it happens to me big time. I feel like as I am creating these people, I'm like getting to know people that are existent in the world somehow. And I think that really helps me feel inspired to create them because it just... It's not just brush strokes on a canvas. It's like a person that I'm representing and I want to do her justice. You know what I mean? So I always try and do Calypso justice by making her as beautiful as I can um, because she deserves it. I, I feel like she's a, a great friend, somebody that you would want in your life. Also, um, I managed to do the cutest feet I've ever done in my life in this painting. Usually my bush queens have Flintstones feet, like I say, and she absolutely does have the goofy hands, but I'm gonna have to try and make her feet look exactly like this every time because I'm starting to feel like a thing that I did here was give Calypso another trademark, which is adorable little pixie feet that I am not gonna be able to stop doing without missing them. So. Even though she's somebody that I've painted many times before, I'm still discovering new things about Calypso. And isn't that a beautiful thing? <laughs> It's when I start to add their little unique features that I really feel them coming together, like s signature colors, for example. Calypso's signature color is this royal blue, and she's always wearing um, sort of like a little tube top and panties that are this color, and she paints her nails this color as well. You also can't see it too, too well on here, but she has freckles, and um, those, are th those are things that Calypso has with her all the time. Like I can draw her in different poses. Sometimes I give her more or less hair depending on what she wants to rock that day. <laughs> she love how I talk about her like she's actually a real person, but legit, that's how she feels to me. So there, um, but yeah, it's like a funny thing because up until the point where I start to sort of get her dressed, even like I put on her signature Bush Queen makeup and I start to paint her outfit and then I'm like, there's my girl, that's Calypso and I can sort of start to recognize her because up until then she's kind of just another like indistinguishable figure on a canvas. But much like all of us existing in real life, we have little unique details that make us our special and beautiful selves and Calypso is like that too. So I'm just going in and painting her outfit and this is the point where I start to think that I want to use this color more because it's just gorgeous and you'll see you'll see later that it it really stands out with what I'm doing. 
also with um, Calypso's hair, I'm just really patting it on. One, because she has like a very textured like curl pattern to her hair and this is just like the easiest way for me to create that. But also, I'm really letting some of the areas be lighter and there is actually so much dimension in this hair when it's done. Like it's not just one thick layer of the same like black color. I actually think I made it read a lot more, I don't want to say realistic, but I just like the, the different sort of tones that came out in this. I think it suits her really well. And it's just something that I'm always trying to, because this is the first time I've ever painted Calypso on a canvas. I painted her lots of times before on paper, but it was just so interesting to see like this hairstyle on this queen that I've done so many times came out in a different looking way because normally what I do to get those lighter parts right there is mix up a lighter brown to add on top of her hair. So this may seem utterly uninteresting as I'm babbling on about like patches on a canvas, but to me it was like a discovery. I was like, oh, this is like how I normally make Calypso look, but I'm doing different things to achieve said look. So to me, I'm just, you know, I really like this whole process and I'm excited and uh, that's why I'm babbling about it. So there, anyway, <laughs> adding the signature bush, of course. So um, I'm very lucky that for the most part, people have been supportive of this. They understand what I'm doing, but I am always bracing for people to be like, ew, this is weird. Um, if you feel that way, maybe just don't say it because it's obviously not for you if that's how you feel. <laughs> okay, here's where we're at so far. I, I'm sorry, I always do the line work off camera because it is a thousand percent stressful and I, I just need to do it for my mental health because um, I need to you know, not get overwhelmed. But uh, I also added in some very beautiful, shiny highlights to my gorgeous goddess. Oh my gosh, she is so adorable. I am obsessed. So anyway, um, I am still a little unsure of what I wanna do with the background. I mean, I know what I'm gonna do with this circle. Um, here, I'll show you. Are you ready for this? She is going to be sitting in a circle of gold. How good is that gonna look? And then I just need to decide what color to do the outside. Maybe it would be cool if I did the same color as her little signature bikini and her fingernails. Isn't she the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? I am so obsessed with Calypso. It is, it's it's not funny. Anyway, let's, um, let's gold leaf this baby. I'm so excited. I've never done this before. Yay. Now, as satisfying as all of this time-lapse gold leafing footage is, this I time-lapsed it for a reason. This took me freaking forever, and I was just using Mod Podge to glue it down, but I think that something that dries a little bit faster and a little bit tackier would be a more effective way to lay down gold leaf. Um, this is the first time I've ever used it, so I was kind of just learning as I went, and ultimately, it ended up working out fine, but if anybody knows a better medium with which to lay gold leaf, please let me know because yeah, obviously it looks better if you can get large pieces of it laid flat. I ended up just having a bunch of little crumply bits. Uh, so it's a little bit more three dimensional than I would have wanted, but ultimately like it looks gold. She is in a ring of gold as I intended. And then yeah, I decided to add more of that blue around and then sort of just gradiate do a gradient outwards into a darker color and it's a very messy gradient like you're probably going to be mad at me when you see how sloppy it is but you're also watching me do a lot of things for the first time here so give me the benefit of the doubt this is all a very experimental piece but ultimately calypso is the star and i am just thrilled with how she came out she's gorgeous and i love her so much and i hope you do too so i'm gonna let you watch the rest of the video thank you so much for being here and supporting and i'll talk to you next time Thank you.